Nigga just keep talking all this bullshit, man. I don't know why he think I ain't never hear this nigga talk this gangster to nobody. Boy, you almost got kicked out of Master's house when you try to fire on Travis Scott, but Michael Rubin told you you better be a better be a good old boy and apologize to that nigga, boy. You ran over there and apologized to that nigga, Travis Scott, nigga, because you was drunk, nigga, off some perks. Now you super gangster with me because I don't know no white man that can tell you to stop. Told me the governor told you. Nigga, what are you talking about? What is me talking about? Talking about, oh, when I get back, I'm going to be in front of me. You not about to be in front of nothing. Don't come to my, listen, me, you, matter of fact, they're invited to my house. You, don't come with nobody else. Anybody else on my property will handle the calling. You're allowed. You come on my property and whatever you think you finna do, don't do when I ain't here. Do it when I'm here. But I know, I know the gangster's trick with this. You know, the gangster's trick is, yo, he's, yo, he's here to trick the black man. This is why I can't respect you gangster niggas. Y'all niggas like, the, yo, yo, over time, y'all. Whole gangster image eroded. You see, once we met niggas like King Vaughn and shit like that, we realized that's what a real gangster is. Anytime he had problems, he handled it. Niggas like you, you always got an excuse. Yo, I can't wait to see 6 9 I'm gonna make an example. You see 6 9 yo, he the police, he trying to trick me off the streets. Nigga, which is it? Are you an activist, you a killer. You start tweeting all that shit about me just because you ain't think I was gonna say. Bitch, my address is public. It's on Google. When are you going to pull up? And don't pull up and be like, hey, I'm pissing on his mailbox, y'all. Bro, the only time you should be taking out your dick freak millies for when you whip motherfucking Diddy, nigga. That's kind of funny. But let's get back to the origin of things. Let me just calm myself down. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm, I came on with a lot of energy. I'm going to tell you why. Because y'all might be like, why are you talking like that? If y'all gonna co-sign anybody, you gotta you gotta realize everybody got families, everybody got situations. Meek got online and said, "Send me his address. I'm pulling up to his house to shoot a music video, and I'm gonna piss on his steps." Y'all should know already with everything I've been through, I don't take those words lightly. You're playing with your own health, and you're playing with the health of mine. I'm not into that. Boy, you mad because nigga said you sucked the cock? That ain't my concern. But you got to watch how you throwing threats around. But let me tell you something about Meek Mill. Meek Mill think he's invincible. I talk to all these rappers that are cool with him. They're all scared of him. I don't know why it is. He's going to have to show me why they're scared of him. Because every time I talk to them, they all admit to me in privacy, yeah, he's stupid as fuck. But, you know, it's Meek. Like, why don't you just tell me he's wrong? Nobody want to tell him that. So he gonna have to prove to me. He's a, it's the first time I'm I'm at the cross I'm at the cross point in my life in my career with the rapper. I need him to prove to me. And when he proves to me, I'm gonna be like, yo, y'all, he was right. But until then, man, I'm not listening to no nigga who went to jail for a wheelie and cried for six months. I got him crying like two months ago, talking about how some white nigga saved his life. Him and bunny hopping for all these weirdo niggas. He talking about, he buying, you know what I mean, vibrating panties and dildos and then talking about the Atlanta life is so freaky, but then he mad because another nigga accused him of doing gay shit. Nigga, you got to explain yourself. You That ain't me. So let's talk, Meek. Your music ain't finna sell. I don't care what type of issue you got with me. I Meek, let me tell you this. I talked to Atlantic. I've been getting a six-figure check off them for a long time. They dropped you. I know. They said you were ass. They said you were trash. You were irrelevant to the current climate of music. You have been stuck sounding old for dumb long. But it's the same thing when last night somebody hit me up saying that was I down to get on the phone with you. And I said, bro, I already did this. Like, why are we even talking again? And they said, no, Meek Mill didn't understand the internet. And I said, you mean a 45-year-old man, which, by the way, Meek, you call me old, but you older than me. You mean a 45-year-old man who's been in this game forever don't understand the internet? What do you mean he don't understand? No, he thought you made it. What do you mean he thought I made it up? Are you dumb or stupid, Meek? So let's actually put some things into um, perspective if we're going to recap this whole thing. I've been told y'all, there's, there's a couple niggas who are just the stupidest niggas in the game. Meek Mill is one nigga I nominate. He's the dumbest nigga possible. If you can tell by his lack of grammar, if you can tell by his lack of sense of uh, um, self-awareness, if you can tell by how he carries himself on social media, how you the only nigga in hip hop that killed your own career by how you tweeted, nigga? If you had given your fucking Twitter to a label like the majority of artists does. 
your career would have been much better. You tweeted yourself out your spot. Now you're going to make up all type of shit. Did you know this dumb nigga actually got online today talking about, yo, it was AI. The lawsuit is AI made up. Is this nigga dumber? What? Are y'all going to allow this to happen? This one stupid nigga. I'm telling you, all that tough shit he talking about. Meek, let me tell you when I stop believing you because you, you know what you're, you're shocked about? You're like, oh my God. Well, I told him I'm going to beat him up. Well, I seen you fight. You can't fight it. We could down. I'm down to squabble. You down? We could set up through Savage anything. You want to get up? Uh, 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 you want to get some money? We could set up some, somewhere else. We could set up to Savage, just me and you. I'm down to squabble with you. I really don't think you could fight, and I really don't think you want no problems with me, and I really don't respect your hands, nothing. If you beat me up, so what? I don't care, but that's how much of a bitch I think you are. Let's talk about it. I wouldn't say this to half the other niggas in hip-hop because I don't think they like you. I just think you a hoe. I'm sorry. So I'm at the point where I'm like, the nigga who I think can't fight, who think he got some money, but he not, like, nigga, you just, like, two years ago, you was talking about you down to the last million. I remember you was, was sitting with Charlamagne looking all weak in the Bahamas. Like, damn. This is a nigga who think, like, what, well, you, you got some money? Everybody got money. You a house slave now. You run around doing bunny hops. You go from here to there, nigga. I was at the Super Bowl, so was you. You was fixing Michael Rubin coffee, nigga. I seen it. It was in a box. I seen you, nigga. What is he doing? Is he fix? Oh my God, Meek is over here. Oh my. Meek is over here fixing this nigga fucking coffee, nigga. You like a house slave these days? What's popping? So it's all good. Let's talk some facts though, okay? Here's the reality of things, people. Meek Mill is as delusional as they come. His issue, if you ask him with me, stems from years ago. He started getting to beef. By the way, I also blew up at that time. I'm not going to lie. That was a major moment. I know some of y'all keep saying Warren Chirac, but the most major moment in me blowing up was 2015 when Drake and Meek Beef erupted. I was the number one person to report on it, and I reported on everything. During me reporting on that uh, um, beef, I've never met Drake. I never talked to Drake. I had limited conversations even with people that was on his team. I spoke a lot to Meek Mill's team. Coon Philly, I don't know if you fuck with Meek anymore, but you remember those conversations. Through conversations with Meek and his, Meek and his team, I realized Meek Mill was nothing more. Me, not because he's rich means he has any type of smarts. He's in half an idiot. And I've always treated him like that because once you realize someone's is barely, you know, even he's barely coherent and he's he, he, he's barely even like barely legible and he could barely even write. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I'll tell you how I came to that conclusion. Meek Mill not understanding what Internet culture is, which to me was shocking, because if you have been popping past 2013, your fans have never purchased a CD of yours, most likely. They have streamed your music. They have consumed it online. They have tweeted it. They have talked about it on social media. That's really how things go. But here's the problem with a nigga like me. He's stupid. He's stupid. And he thinks he's like a rapper in the 90s. Or he thinks he's above everything and that people were always going to fuck with him. That's why when he fell off this time, he was so shocked. He never engaged with internet culture. Meek, I'm giving you, listen, I'm going to get to the roast in you, but I'm telling you why you fell off. I'm telling you why. Listen, I heard the whole situation from motherfucking Atlantic Records. They didn't want to renew your shit. They dropped you. They dropped you like a bad habit. All this, oh, I'm independent shit. Yeah, nigga, they said they wasn't going to sign you because they wasn't going to pay you what, what you were supposed to get. You know why? They knew you were a nigga who was too stubborn. A nigga who kept saying the streets, the streets, the streets. And at the end of the day, the streets don't buy your fucking records, nigga. It's them fans on the internet. But you didn't care about that. That's why you're sitting here like, I'm independent. I'm, I'm giving you the game. That's why you look fucking stupid. So let me continue the story. Meek's team tells me that... The only reason why Drake is winning the beef is because Drake purchased a million bots. Does that sound familiar? Does anybody watch his timeline from yesterday? Has he said the same thing? Here's the sad part about it. He's been saying the same dumb shit for 10 years. 
That's why it's even more sad. He doesn't learn. He doesn't understand internet culture. He doesn't know that the, the like, if you understand internet culture, if people see you bothered by the trolling, they'll troll you more. He doesn't understand that if you're beefing with a popular rapper like a Drake, and he, basically they felt you caught an L because you you're, you're slow to respond and he had a hot song, they're going to spam L's under your comments. This delusional motherfucker was literally saying, Ack, could you... Could you change up the shit that I could win? That's what this nigga's mad about. You know why it's so surprising? He's sucking Drake's dick now. Drake's bringing him out like a fucking baby. Drake brought him out in Philly like, yeah, look, look remember when I killed your career? Look, they'll, they'll like you now. Come on, nigga. Come on. <laughs> Hurry up. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, that's the thing I killed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, he right there. He's right there. Nigga, you loving it. Your career never been the same. The boy killed your career. Brought you back out, and my whole thing is, you're smiling like a fucking fan with that nigga. But you're mad at me. But let's go back to the root problem of Meek Mill. He's a gangster who never has gangster energy with the people he should have gangster energy with. Drake, he couldn't wait for Drake to say, oh, I'm over it. We could be friends. Oh, my God, Drake, I love you. I love you, Drake. I love you, Drake. I love you. Okay. The niggas in the city that I've been calling him out. From ARAB to all these other people. Oh my God. He's acting like he don't know them. Even the nigga who's actually, and I'm going to show y'all, has a picture with him. The nigga who sued him. He had no problem with. I equivalated. Actually, that's my, might not even be a word. Ugh. But me being mad at me over this whole situation. And I'm going to go back and forth. Just keep the, keep the timeline in your head. Make me mad with me in this situation. It's like a nigga walking in the room, licking his hand, and slapping the fuck out of Meek Mill. When he slaps Meek Mill, I'm like, oh, shit, and I'm laughing. Meek is standing in front of the nigga who slapped him, but Meek turns to me and says, bitch-ass nigga, what's so funny, nigga? What the fuck is so funny, nigga? What's up? What up? What you want to do? What, what you want to do? And I'm like, wait, are you mad at me for laughing, or you're mad at the nigga who slapped you? The whole time, he ain't acknowledging nigga who slapped him. The whole time, you know how the story goes? Diddy gossiped to a man who's a producer, allegedly, that said he fucked Meek. Meek could have came out and said, what that bitch ass nigga talk, Diddy talking about me for? Why the hell this bitch ass producer lying on me and Diddy? Never said none of that. You know what he said? Ack, you're the problem. Huh? But let's go back. Let's go back. So I told you about the delusion, right? He said, well, he's only losing the beef with, with Drake because Drake has bought all the bots in the world. I was confused. I was like, huh? Then I see the true nature of Meek Mill. Drake comes to Philly. I showed up to Philly. I had to see it. I said, no way. Meek got to run on stage. This isn't Philly. Like, they're, it's the height of their beef. Meek going to run up on stage and slap Drake. He's a gangster rapper. <laughs> How silly was I believing this ultra superhero gangster image that these guys promote? <laughs> Basically, not a motherfucking thing happened. Drake left very safely. He arrived very safely. Not a hair on his head was harmed. You know what happened the next week? Meek's team calls me again. Yo, Ack! You them pussy niggas thought they got us. I'm like, oh shit. Y'all beat up Drake. What's going on? Tell me. Nah, son. What are you talking about? Drake? Nah, what? what? Nigga, we called Quinn Miller. Huh? Yeah, we called him. Why are y'all telling me this? Yo, man, I told you, man. This We from the trenches, nigga. Like, all that, like, trenches. We from the streets. Niggas from Philly. I'm like, what is this guy talking about? Now, by the way, to be honest, Meek didn't say it was, it was his manager or nothing. But they all represent Meek, right? So, okay. So, yo. We just beat up Quentin Miller. We gonna send you the, the, the footage. I'm like, ah, well, I'm not like TMZ like that. But I guess. Uh, and also, I was thinking, damn, that's kind of fucked up. Y'all beat up the guy who was just writing music? What the fuck is it? They're like, no, we got. They say, matter of fact, we ain't gonna send you the footage. Let's wait till he's annoyed. Luckily for Quentin Miller, he just admitted it. Yeah, I got beat up. Whatever. But it dawned on me. 
how come Meek got his career killed by Drake and never talked that crazy to Drake that he was going to do nothing, never did nothing to Drake, but the ghostwriter, he was so happy about beating up. That was surprising to me. Damn. That couldn't be a trend, right? The gangsters usually keep it gangsters with the gangsters, right? All right. Then a little bit later on happened. I get another call. It's BT. Oars weekend. I'm in L.A. Yo, so we got him. Yeah, we just, we just jumped that nigga. I'm like, oh, shit. Y'all don't fucked up champagne poppy? What happened? Tell me the tea. Drake? What? What, what the fuck? We ain't got no Drake. We got Safari! <sighs> okay. Yeah, son. We pulled up on him, nigga. You should have seen my face when I hopped out the SUV. I was looking devious. Did you hit him? Nah, but the goons was there. Okay. A few hours later, seen a video. Me copping out. Safari running. They chase him like wild hyenas. That was that. Interesting. But there was another situation. But it happened previously. Talking to him, I said, Hey, I heard there was I heard Meek got beat up by a problem in, in the airport. Is that uh, 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 no, we don't want to talk about that? Hmm. That's interesting. I've been waiting for the tough guy to be tough with the other tough guy or at least the people he was really beefing with. It never happened. So now it's coming to the point where Meek has unanimously lost the beef. His career is not the same. His booking price is abysmal. He's fell off. This is the time I'm thinking, oh, I knew Drake fucked up. You finally got this nigga to crash out because it's one thing beating a nigga in the beef. It's another thing killing his whole career. It's time. I told you this nigga from the trenches. He's from Philly. He's about to go crazy. I see Meek pop up and he said, I'm going to make an example. I said, oh, shit. Finally, OVO is done. Uh, even though I'm like, oh my God, that's my favorite rap. You know what he said? Yo, 6 9 where you at? You want to hear the irony? 6 9 just got locked up for a Rico charge. He was now tweeting that his new focus was to eliminate 6 9 after he had gotten incarcerated. Why is that funny? When Shotty was out here shooting everybody, I can say it now he got charged for everything. Shotty had 6 9 meet Meek Mill. They were cool. Wasn't until 6 9 went to jail. Now Meek was, yo, let's go! You ever seen that, that meme where two dogs are barking at each other and there's a divider in the middle? Like, and as soon as the divider go up, they're like, Meek Millie. We can't find nobody tough he's been tough with. We don't know what he's done. All right. All right. All right. Now, it's going to be a quick get into this because I just got off work. So if you want to catch my live and in-depth thoughts, this Meek Mill versus DJ Academic stream, then, you know, you're just going to have to come to my live this weekend. I, I stream every weekend, damn near. So just pop in, say what's up, say hi, and I'll probably be talking about this a little bit later. But since it is kind of breaking news, one, Meek Mill snitched on DJ Academic. Fucking dope. <laughs> he got on Twitter and said the governor called him. I don't know why the governor has a street nigga like Meek Mill's number, but the governor called him. <laughs> he got on fucking Twitter. Twitter, it said the governor called him and he said he began to tell the governor about all the bad things academics has done to hip-hop and the culture and all the rap beef he's insinuated and all the rap beef he's insinuated that has led to peace. 
go get a kill. Yes, that's what Meek Mill told the governor. And so everybody has thoughts. Everybody is calling this nigga a snitch right now. Because as much as people don't like academics, the street niggas don't like a snitch as well. And so when you sit here and say you have the governor's personal number and you called them and you told them about one of your ops, that's snitching, nigga. That's telling. That's the prime definition of it, unfortunately. He didn't write no paperwork or statement on him, but damn near might as well. You called, the governor called you and you, you spewed all of the shit you know about academics like some fucking teenager <laughs> complaining about somebody they don't like. So of course, Act did what needed to be done and he straight up violated this nigga Meek Mill on his stream. He went crazy on him. Now it's been a minute since Meek and Act beef because from what I was hearing, 21 Savage was the reason they decided to call it a truce and make peace but once meek mill got on fucking twitter or x elon musk's twitter you might as well call it that once he got on there and started accusing academics of being the reason that people are calling him gay right now when act isn't the reason for that at all <laughs> he just read the fucking lawsuit like everybody else did and seen that rapper redacted r&b singer redacted and then they have a little part where it explains who the redacted person might be so it says this redacted rapper was with Nicki Minaj and is from Philadelphia <laughs> like I said in the video I already did about the Diddy lawsuit it's kind of like Brock Lesnar <laughs> being mentioned in the Vince McMahon lawsuit he wasn't mentioned but who else is a USC heavyweight champion who was also a WWE champion in the fucking WWE it's only one person I mean you could say Ronda Rousey but why would she be sexually assaulting a woman keep it a buck so meek it wasn't act it was buddy who is suing Diddy that's the person you should be mad at right now not dj academics and meek is just doing what he always does he's looking stupid on the fucking internet that's what he does and that's apparently what he does best unfortunately and i like that album meek did too good to be true with rick ross that wasn't a bad album but he just needs to stay off the internet and just keep rapping but the more you talk and the more shit you do on the internet the more street cred you fucking lose my nigga let me know what you guys think about this whole situation and subject in the comments below i am savvy mike and this I am Savvy Mike TV. Peace.